Good morning, friends. Welcome to our uh, Thursday morning devotion. I come to you each Tuesday and Thursday about 9.30 with a morning devotion. You know, this morning I woke up and looked out the front door and there was ice on my bird feeder this morning and there's frost that's covering the grass. So it's a brisk morning here in Lake Junaluska. One of the things that I treasure on a cold morning, and we have so many of them, is a wicked hot shower. And so this morning I took that hot shower and just luxuriated in that. And every time truly I take a hot shower, which by the way, I'm legendary for loving them. I'm very cold natured, so hot showers are my favorite thing in the world. But often I think about Several years ago, I had the opportunity to travel to Haiti, and my colleagues and I were staying in uh, dorms that were above a health clinic. And the health clinic had to, had to truck in all of the water that it used. So the water came from a water treatment facility in a tanker truck, and then it would be delivered into a cistern, and that cistern would feed our showers. And so we were asked, one, to take as few showers as we could get away with taking. And two, they would be cold showers. There was no hot water. Now granted, it's a little warmer in Haiti, so the cold water felt better than it does in a spring, cold spring day where I live. Um, but after taking a week of cold showers, I think I've, I've never forgotten uh, how grateful I am to have warm water. Now, living in isolation these days, I'm like many of you, I've, I've cleaned out some closets. And, you know, in contrast to how much I love the hot water, sometimes I'm ashamed of just the stuff that I've accumulated in my house. One of the things that mocks me every time I open my pantry is this, this crock pot. <laughs> because it's unopened. I've never even opened it. Um, what happened was I had a crock pot. I was careless with it. It broke. So I replaced it. And then I decided I wanted an instant pot. So I got that. And so this crock pot has never been used. And so eventually I will give it to someone who can use it. But in the meantime, it truly does just sit there mocking me. And it's no small thing either. It's a, you saw it, it's big. It takes up all this room. So I'm learning in the midst of this isolation, the things that I really don't need. And it draws me to this idea of what does it mean to be content? In Genesis, I mean, very early on, God uh, gives us this beautiful creation. And we immediately, as humanity, begin to press from that creation more than it really um, needs to give us, more than we need. And so Psalm 119.36 says, Turn my heart to your degree, to your degree, decrees, and not to selfish gain. Turn my heart to your decrees and not to selfish gain. And so if accumulating of goods is selfish gain, then what does it mean to turn to God's decrees? What would that look like? I think 1 Timothy uh, gives us an answer there. It says, there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment. So contentment means aiming to have the things uh, that will sustain us while not pressing creation for more than we need. The Amish have this saying, it says, to desire to be rich is to desire to have more than what we need to be content. Hmm. More than we need to be content. So why is it important for us not to to really go beyond that point of contentment. Um, one of the things is we really can remember the promises of Jesus who said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. 
it turns out we need so much less than what we have. Um, all of these things that we're grasping at, thinking they'll keep us happy, maybe we could look for instead in our relationship with God and in the promises of Jesus to never leave us or forsake us. Maybe we can pursue righteousness and godliness and love and endurance and gentleness and all of these things um, that are Christ-like in our lives. So being content, needing fewer things in our homes, in our lives, helps us to preserve the integrity of the world, right? Everything that we use and all of the things that we make, all the things that we manipulate, all the things that we accumulate, they all come from creation at their very source. They all come from things that are gifts from God. And so the fewer of those things that we can use, the more of creation we leave for um, other creatures, for people who have more need, for just enjoyment in their natural state. Uh, so we can all be better stewards and caretakers of God's creation. And if we allow ourselves to do that, I think at the root of that, we will really glorify our maker. So um, there are parts of God's creation that we can utterly enjoy and give gratitude for. And um, we are meant to enjoy that creation. So there's, there's, you know, I think that's fine as long as we really give thanks and praise and use it really well. But any little thing we can leave that we don't need, then we can leave it um, for other creatures, for enjoyment, for creation, and, um, and just pass and find contentment and godliness. So I want to leave you as I typically leave you with a prayer from a book of Uncommon Prayer by Brian Doyle. And Brian's prayers are always a little more like short essays, but this is a prayer in celebration of the greatest invention ever, the wicked hot shower. Oh God, help me bless my soul. Is there any pleasure quite so artless and glorious and simple and unadorned and productive and restorative as a blazing hot shower when you really, really want a hot shower? When you are not yet fully awake, when you are wiped out from two hours of serious basketball, when you're weary and speechless after a trip or after trauma, thank you, inventiveness, for making a universe where there is water and heat and nozzles and towels and steam and hairbrushes and razors for cutting that line that distinguishes your beard from your chest. Thank you most of all, oh generosity, for water. Deft invention, water. Who would have ever thought to mix hydrogen and oxygen? Not us, but it is everything we are. It falls freely from the sky. It carries us our toys and joys. It is clouds and mist and fog and sleet and breath. There's no sweeter, more crucial food. It ought to remind us, oh God, of your generosity every time we sip or swim or shower. It reminded me of you this morning. I bow in gratitude. And now, forgive me, I must be going as there's a small boy hammering on the door and wailing and gnashing his teeth and a whole line forming behind him. And so, amen. And so that is Brian Doyle's prayer and thanks for the wicked hot shower. And so I'll leave you with this question and maybe you'll answer it in the comments below. What is one thing you found in your time of isolation, uh, maybe a newfound gratitude for that has come from creation? And what is something you have found that you really don't need? I'll leave you with these questions, my friends. Go in peace. Amen.